Good morning. God bless everyone here, seen and unseen. It's a fine Sunday morning, Redemption Life Center, Catoos, Oklahoma. And if you've been following, you know, past couple messages, you know, here and there, I've kept talking about the upper room. And, you know, go to the upper room and stay in the upper room and, and, and if you leave the upper room, take Jesus with you and all that's great, but there's something that happens in the upper room that is hard to explain. And I've never ministered this message before, so God help me, you know. He gave me a lot of material and you're gonna you're gonna look at some of the stuff I'm gonna say and like and sit there and go, How does this fit with this? But just bear with me. Maybe I can paint the picture, you know, or let him paint the picture. Uh, but today I want to talk about the anointing. You know, because that's, that's part of the ability that, ha that happens with the Holy Spirit. And you can't really describe it really that well. I've, it's hard to tell somebody, it's hard to explain something supernatural to somebody that can barely understand the natural. That's true. <laughs> you know. Well, this is spiritual. Well, what does that mean? Uh, well, it, it's not natural. Okay, but what does that mean? You know, it's like it's hard to explain things because it's more, with us, it's been more like an experience. And unless it's actually happened to you, it's hard to explain. It's like the night I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, it didn't matter how long I had been in church up to that point. It didn't prepare me for that moment. I was in shock and, and awe. And what is happening to me? <laughs> you know, I didn't ask for this. You know, well, you know, this thought came to me the other day at work. You know, most people don't want to be ministered to. And I was thinking of a slogan for T-shirt that would say, you may not want this, but you need it. <laughs> you may not want to hear this, but you need to, whether you like it or not. Because there's going to be some individuals out there that's like, thank God you didn't keep your mouth shut. You know. So, and you're looking over here going, why do you have Robin's thing again? Well, it's not just her thing, it's our thing, it's God's thing. You know. Uh, the Dave, the title of this much is, John, I'm going to call it a greater within us. A greater within us. Okay. I want to go to... Exodus, because you got to take the old with the new, and 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 make it balanced. So Exodus twenty, um, verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Okay. Sounds easy enough. Verse nine: Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is of the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son or thy daughter nor the manservant, maidservant, or thy cattle. Heaven forbid your animals do any work, you know, really for you. I look at our dog all the time. I was like, would you do something? Just sweep the floor or something. Take the trash out. I mean, you know, instead of just standing there begging for food. <laughs> anyway. Verse 11, for in six days the Lord made heaven, earth, and the sea, and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Okay? So I've been thinking about this. Six days, or 6,000 years, okay? To this point is man. Okay? Here, now it's God. But here, now it's us, together with God. Okay? And you could still do it like this, but this whole thing is God. Yeah. To separate literal days and, and times for events and stuff, God's not into that. But I did find an interesting number, and I know I say God's not really a number person, 
but he has numbers in there, and we'll, we'll get to it soon, in here, and it's a pretty neat, I just, I, it was a discovery for me, but I wasn't like Dave, oh, we need to be jumping and, and shouting and doing cartwheels and backflips. If I could do that, I'd, I'd have a different job, but <laughs> last night my back was talking to me because yesterday was our Friday, and, you know, if I have a sleepy face, forgive me, you know, get off at 11 p.m. and go home and don't sleep for a few hours and then, you know. Many of us do all that dancing in the Lord inside because our bodies don't cooperate. But we still do it. We just can't see it. <laughs> well, that's great. You know, I, I see it all the time. And and uh, actually God, God said to me that all that dancing and stuff that I used to do when the anointing would come upon me during song service, he says, that's going to return. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm still looking forward to new exciting times Amen. In, in God. Not just me, because I don't think of it as just myself. It's like whoever I'm with is going to be an exciting time. Because God's got things in, in store and plans that we don't know about. Amen. People are going to come we don't know about. And he told me that I was going to be a help to a lot of people from my past. Well, a lot of people from my past have not come circle yet. Right. You know, and you can say it's a small world after all. And sometimes you say, hey, you know, I thought you were on the other side of the, the country. And it's like, hey, small world. But, you know, is the timing right for them to... For you to enter in maybe not because last time I, I i saw one of my old friends i approached them instead of them approaching me flipped them right out they weren't prepared so you got to let god be god you know as much as you want to reconnect you know let him do the connecting so you know just for fun here i looked up the word sabbath you know and it says intermission Kind of like when you go to a movie, and or they used to, and they'd have intermission. That's when that's when you would go get your snacks and stuff and instead of just trying to cram it all in before the movie started and uh, give people a, a restroom break, you know. But it says intermission. That is specifically the Sabbath plus every Sabbath from another number. It says from rest. Okay, well, hold, the, hold your thought on that, and uh, we'll jump over here to, keep, keep your place in Exodus here, and we're going to jump over to Matthew chapter 11, because he makes a statement that's interesting, Matthew chapter 11, and it's going to be... Mm, Okay, I'm going to start in verse 25. It says, At this time, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. So even back then, the mystery of this word was being revealed unto the children of God. Okay? We think, well, true ministry didn't begin until after he came back on Pentecost, but the word of God was pouring into the earth ever since Adam, some way, somehow, because ministries were formed from the garden. It wasn't just Adam and Eve. So people, you got two people in the earth, circumcised and uncircumcised, spiritually, of heart. And there are those that hear the word, maybe for the first time, they get excited. It's like, man, I've never heard this before. This is intriguing. I want to know more about this. And then you have the other coin that's like, I don't like what I'm hearing. I want to hear something else or do something else. It's like, I don't have time for that nonsense. But for other people, it's, it seems like that's completing their world, you know. So, so even Jesus is saying, hey, man, this babes have been getting this information revealed to them. Okay? That's not my point here. Uh, verse 26, even so, Father, 
for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye will find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now these are some interesting words here, okay? Everybody thinks church is supposed to be on Sunday, but Jesus is speaking of something else here. He said, come unto me, all, all ye that need rest. Well, if I'm going to wait six days just so I can rest, that's a lot of work. But he's talking about something else here. Uh, look at the word yoke. It says to join servitude, okay, beam of balance. Now, you've heard that term, you know, talking about two people, you know, they're either equally yoked or unequally yoked. There's not a balance there. But he's saying if you come, if you come and join with me and start learning of me, then we're going to become one with each other. We're yoking together. Okay? Um, he says, the yoke is easy. The word easy there says employed or useful. Manner or morals. And then he says, my burden is light. Burden is task or service to carry cargo. Well, we're also known as vessels. Vessels of honor, not dishonor. And we're also known as ships. And ships carry cargo. Well, what's the cargo? The Word of God. <coughs> and then he says, burdens light. And the word light there actually means easy. <laughs> He's saying, my, and when you come into union with, union with me and my word and you're learning from me, it's so easy. There's nothing hard about it because all you have to do is simply believe. But man <laughs> has to strive in his mind to work something. It can't be that easy. We're, we're going to keep digging. Okay, but you're going to need another shovel because you keep breaking yours. Ground's too hard. But God says, I prepare the earth. I've removed all the rocks, stone, stubble, and the seed's going in, and I'm watering it. Don't let your cloudy day ruin the rain, you know? So he's talking about a rest here. It's not a physical rest, and we all know that. And you're sitting there going, what does this have to do with the anointing? Hang on. Hang on. Because the rest he's talking about is supernatural, and... It takes his anointing, and you're like, what is that? We'll, we'll get there. So, I want to go back to Exodus 20 now, after saying that. Just throwing that in there. And Exodus 20 and verse 3, <coughs> Thou shalt have no other God before me. Okay? For man, this is impossible. Everything is a God to them. Everything is more important to them than God. Everything is more important to them than letting this rest come to them or for them to come to a rest in his spirit. There's constantly striving, 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 and it's the wrong kind of striving. And, you know... When, when you look at humanity, it, it's, it's kind of sad because humanity without God is, is sad. People work their whole life for whatever they think their retirement is, and then it's done. And it's like, to me, that's not life and not purpose, but in union with him, gives your life meaning and a purpose and a completion because he says it completes you. 
He says, you may not want it, but it's what you want. It's what you need. And he's, and I could, I could go to many scriptures that I don't even have written down. I don't have the time. He's like, this mortal must put on this word. Your life depends on it. You have to, whether you like it or not. You, your, your life needs it. And in doing so, you find true life. Okay? It, it's it's kind of hard for God to explain something. He's like, just let me in. Just open the door. Just let me in. And I'll start, I'll start rearranging the file cabinet. Pretty soon things will be alphabetized. You'll know where to find things. It won't be a mess. You know, just let me in there. I'm the best secretary you could have, you know. I'm going to sort things out for you in your life. You've tried and tried, and you can't do it. Okay, just let me in there. Okay. Um, Genesis, let's go to Genesis chapter 6 real quick. Come on, Genesis. Chapter 6. Verse 3. It says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days, now get this, shall be 120 years. Well, how many were left in the, up, in the upper room? 120. A day with the Lord is as a thousand. Okay, there's 120 years here. So this is what I like to call the anointing number. Not that that means anything. I just think it's a neat connection there. The anointing number, 120. Okay? Now, this is the first use of the word day. Genesis 6, verse 3. The Lord said, my spirit. Yet his days, his days, the first use of the word days. That word day there says to be hot. Okay? It says from sunrise to sunset. And then we get back to this of time, place, or order. Because it says here in this word days, space plus time, day, time, year. In the definition of the word days of time, place, and order. Okay? And if you keep referencing the numbers of the word day, you get to where it talks about the mind of man. It says, tame and make gentle. Okay? So it's giving you a clue of what this rest is actually talking about here. You can't change yourself. I've tried. I've tried developing new habits and I've tried getting rid of old habits. It's hard. Need God's help. Need that union. Need his influence. I need that anointing because the anointing breaks the yoke and creates a new one. Okay? We're going to get there. Mm. Now you don't have to turn back here. This is Exodus 20 verse 9. We read it. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Well, in man there is no rest. But in, the, in God there's rest. So he's trying to tell you something there. Now, if we went back to, and you don't have to turn there, we went back to Genesis 6.3, says, God, God will not always strive with man. So I, I looked up the word strive there in the Hebrew. It's 1777. It says to rule by implying to judge as an umpire. Well, what's an umpire do? He knows all the rules to the game. Exactly. He makes sure that, that, he said, straight is the way and narrow, narrow, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. There's, there's only one way to do this thing. There's only a, one right way to do it, and that's in me. You, you can try. Try and do it yourself, and you will, you will ultimately fail. And you'll probably dig yourself deeper than you did before. 
You know, it's like somebody that, uh, I love chocolate. I love chocolate. I could eat two or three pounds of chocolate easy and not get sick. Oh, wow. <laughs> not get sick. Because I tell myself, I'm going to eat this and I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> okay? Now, if you were to abruptly stop and say, I'm not going to eat chocolate anymore for six months, do you know what kind of cravings you're going to have? Okay. When you when you actually go to enjoy a piece of chocolate again, it went from three pounds to six pounds. Mm -hmm. Now you got a problem. Now you, you can't control it. Yeah. Little by little, moderation. Okay. So he's like saying, I'm not always going to have to tell you the rules of the game. I'm not always going to have to show you the way because you're going to learn what the way is and it's kind of like the student becomes the master or the son becomes the father something like that it's like we still have him by the hand you don't let go but it's like you don't have to tell me how to do it anymore God I know how to do it and that's what he wants he ultimately wants you to stand on your two feet in union with him not by yourself <laughs> okay um, I got a little bit more on the word days here it says to be hot and there's a reason for that it's not just because it's summertime it says a day as the warm hours from sunrise to sunset and now now it goes into a place time and order it says daily birth full life required season space or process of time trouble weather plus younger now remember that plus younger because that means something later and you're like what well, I, I can't connect all this shit we get there I, I can only give what God shows me and I try to explain the connections the best I can space process of time, trouble weather. Well, what did Paul say? The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force, which means I'm delivering this word to you. I'm delivering this, this message to you. It's up to you what you're going to do with it. Are you going to take it and live it? And you're sitting there going, well, I'm not violent. You better be because if you're not, it'll be taken from you. It's not talking about violence. It's talking about I'm standing my ground and what God has given me, and I was thinking of the word the other day, landmarks. Landmarks he's putting in our lives, don't let those be taken away by the fowls of the air. Okay? You stand on, you stand on what is, you know is right. He's, he's, he's developing that in us. Don't let it be taken away. What's the point of going to the school to develop your mind if you're not really receiving the information? It's like, well, I'm just doing this to pass the class. That may be good enough for man, but that's not good enough for God. Because later on he says, study to show thyself approved. But it's not approved to him. It's approved to yourself that you know that you know. And sometimes you say, well, I couldn't think of what to say at the time. Well, if you're letting God speak through you, whatever words come out is apparently the words that needed to be spoken. You can think of all these things later going, I should have said this and I should have done that. Okay, but don't spank yourself because it's done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's times I, I leave service and I go home, oh, why didn't I say this? I always say so much more than what I have written down, so much more. And it didn't used to be that way. I used to have to write things down word for word. But... I'm resting in him. I'm trusting what he's doing in me to let that come out. Don't try too hard. Have fun, you know. Okay, moving on. Let's see here. Uh, so that was interesting on the word days. It's kind of important. Plus younger. We'll get there. All right. Um, let's go to Isaiah. 
because we've got to have some Isaiah on a Sunday morning. Isaiah 58. And verse, well, let's just start in verse 2. Isaiah 58, verse 2. Yet they seek me daily, there's that word daily again, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness and, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, saying, They and thou seest not. Wherefore we have afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. He's saying, what man's doing doesn't work. And I don't I don't hear it. Because you haven't allowed my son in, first of all. And I only hear him. Okay? Uh, verse 4, behold. Um, verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? And you're sitting there going, now you're talking about fasting. Well, this has to do with allowing the anointing to cause you to rest in his word, allowing the process to work in your mind, this fasting. He's not talking, he's not telling these people, you're, you're doing a literal fast, but let's talk about that for a second. The mouth. Now, I'm not trying to get the car to have the horse here. Uh, the scripture says, it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, it's what comes out of his mouth, but what what caused the mouth to work in the first place? The mind. It hit your mind first before you opened your mouth. Doesn't work yet. How far mouths work without our mind, that'd be scary. That'd be real scary. So, <laughs> he, he's saying, is this what I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? To bow down his head as a bulrush, to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Of course, I don't do that now, but you could spiritually take that in different directions. Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? No, it's not acceptable. Now, hear me in balance. People that have fasted with food and stuff, uh, God dealt with them to do that. Some of them. And by the end of their fast, the, the Lord spoke to them or showed them something great. That's not for everybody, and that's not what he expects. He's like, I don't want you to afflict your soul. I, I, I made your bodies to eat food and, and drink liquids, and you need that on a daily basis several times a day. That's how I made you. I didn't say don't do that just so I, you could hear my voice. You know, you can talk to me anytime. You know? Okay? Let's keep going here. Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Question. Now I'm not going to keep going down there because it keeps talking about that. My point is, he, he, he looks at this in a different manner than what man does. We've got we to gotta have church on Sundays. No. Every day can be church. Every day can be his rest, and it is. Uh, for the Son of God, every day we rest in him. And, and it's not a physical rest. It's this, this six days, the mind of man running rampant. But at the same time, God is pouring his knowledge in some way, somehow. Okay? And then he gets to his rest. But he's talking about, I finally got enough going on here to start a process. And this process will lead us into this day where you and I together are living life to the fullest. But the only way I could get, get you here was to get my word into you 
by putting in and you have to let go of all these false concepts and ideas and lies and everything that people have taught you whether it was right or wrong and let me go in and sort your filing cabinet let me go in and rearrange your computer let me go in and set things in order of time and place and order and it's going to take time for some it's going to be faster for some it's going to be real slow of place and order well the place is in him I can't think of any other place to be than in him. I like to be in my house, but guess what? That's not my home. It's just a, a place where I go sleep and have pretty little things. That's not my identity. But in him, my God, I have everything. And I'm totally and completely 100% satisfied to be in that, regardless of what I have in this dimension. He says, I can do above all you can ask or think, and I can give you anything you want, but it may not make you happy. It may not make you happy. Okay, let's keep going here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have to turn there for sake of time. I was talking about the mouse with the fasting. If we went to Genesis 2, 16 through 17, he talks about eat of every tree for food, okay, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge is, is God's mind. The good and evil is the mind of man. So you, that's man twisting God's knowledge to get mixture. He's twisting it, corrupting it, perverting it. Is he doing it on purpose? No, because his mind doesn't know any other way to think. I don't, I'm not going to say they're doing it on purpose. They have no other way to think. Their minds have not been elevated. So you can't sit there and go, shame on you. Well, they don't know any better. That's why Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. They don't, they're clueless. Forgive them. You know, that kind of takes away the point of the finger and judgment there. He's like, I'm the judge, but call me Mr. Umpire. I know all the rules to the game. I don't, I don't know shortcuts, but I know the rules of the game, and I know exactly where to get you where you want to go. I know how to get you there. Okay? Now, if we went over to James chapter 3. James chapter 3 and verse 2. This used to be one of my dad's, one of his many favorite scriptures says, for in many things we offend all. Oh, man, I didn't know I was offensive. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Now, wait a second. I thought we had to go to church on Sunday and do all these things according to what the ministry was telling me, and, and I, can be, I can get to heaven. God's saying, no, that's not the fast I've chosen. He's like, any man offend not in word, same as a perfect man, and is able also to bridle the whole body. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, let's look at some things here, because if you just read that as it is, it's clear as mud. So, uh, things, the word things, and me things. Uh, it translates as the largest number. That means all. Okay? Must be talking about people here. Uh, all. It says from G1, which we know is Alpha, it says any six, any man. The union with him. And it goes to the word Logos. So, for many things we offend all, but if any man offend not in logos. Oh, okay. Now it's starting to make a little bit more, little bit more sense. Don't offend how my word translates. Don't take it and twist it. Okay? But also, when we receive one from another, that word, whether it's good or bad, don't take it and twist it. 
if it's bad, you know it's bad. You can always untwist it, deliver it right back, and throw throw them a curveball, and they'll be like, huh? You know, instead of them throwing you a curveball. And uh, the word offend here, in many things we offend, it says sin, miss the mark, stumble. It says to descend from a higher place to lower. You ever have somebody get up in your face and really push your button? Did your mind just go from a higher place to a lower place? <laughs> so quick. So quick. Okay. That's just one aspect of that. Now, there are stumbling blocks set in our way on purpose for learning. Not because he thinks it's fun to watch you climb over things and fall and say, like, <laughs> you hurt yourself. It's not like that. He's sitting there going, I got, I got mountains for you to climb, valleys for you to cross. You may even have to swim a river to see how good your swimming is, how's your swimming abilities, you know. Because I guarantee you by the time he gets done with us, we've won all the gold medals, you know. It's, it's the spiritual Olympics, you know. Um, if we went to Isaiah 30, 28, it says, there's a bridle in the mouths of the people causing them to err. He put it there on purpose. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. But we know what we're doing because he's teaching us. Okay? We don't have to make a mistake. I would never minister a word that I haven't studied. That would be foolish. And uh, there will be no life in it because you're sitting there trying to explain what you think it means. And if God didn't lead you to it, then it's, it's a dead word. Like I said, I've been in services where you listen to the word and you're like, oh, my God, am I in a morgue? It, it feels so bad. It feels so bad. And you feel sorry for them going, wow, they, 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 they really need to ascend the hill of the Lord. But without the anointing, they can't do that. Jesus like, I got to go away so the comforter can come. Why? Because he has a supernatural ability to open up things for you that I can't do. I've explained, I've explained things to these disciples till they're, I'm blue in the face and they don't get it. It's going to take a greater, there's like greater than Jesus, the anointing, greater to perform this thing. Uh, you don't have to go there. Uh, Psalms 32, 9 says, don't be like a horse. Don't be fooled into being led around in error. No. Now, uh, of course, we said Matthew 15, 11, it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of his mouth or what comes out of the mind uh, if we went over to Mark 7.23, it says, All things, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Well, I, I, I don't want to be defiled anymore. Taken advantage of, robbed of a good word, or if somebody were to bless you or bless me, and then there's somebody else that comes along, um, this happened the other day. Uh, we have this reward system at work with these chips, which they don't really follow it the way they should. And if you do good, they give you a chip, which equals X amount of like, one chip is a dollar, one is two dollars, and the black chip is like five bucks, and that's as high as they go. And you can cash these in to human resources and get merchandise. Okay, some of it you can use for work, others you can't, but um, the, the company doesn't really use the system the way it should. And, uh, you know, my wife and I have received a fair amount of chips. And, you know, I've cashed mine in to get some work shirts and uh, some other things. You can get all kinds of gear, hats, clothes, umbrellas, electronic devices, and even they, they started showing other stuff. I'm like, grills and refrigerators. What is this? You know, what is this? Bringing Sears to me or something? I don't need that. I need stuff for work. But anyway, 
It's like some of those were high dollar. You're like, there's no way you could get enough chips to, to get that. But anyway, this one guy, he's like, I've never seen a chip. Well, I can't tell him what I've experienced then. I have a lot of chips. So there's things that, that happen that you can share with people and they may have not been blessed or you've been blessed but you can't share it you know sometimes when Jesus would heal somebody he's like don't tell nobody of course they're gonna run tell somebody a miracle just happened for him but he said that on purpose don't tell nobody yet don't explain things yet till I'm ready for you to you might lose <laughs> what I gave you um, I prayed for this woman years ago who had lupus <coughs> incurable disease but not by the spirit not, by, not with the anointing and at that time the anointing flowed in, in me different than it does now it still flows still flows it's just different uh, manifestation of it and uh, I let loose the Holy Ghost in that uh, I think it was a nursing home and you should have seen all the nurses come running in there when I started yelling. <laughs> but there was a transfer. You could physically feel it. Transfer. And uh, the woman went back to her doctor later because she was visiting my grandma that was in there. And they asked me to pray for her. I was like, are you sure? Because it's going to get crazy. And the uh, doctor said, we can't find it anymore. But she didn't have the foundational knowledge to keep that healing. I lost it, and it came back, and then she died. Okay? We don't want that to happen. Right. We have to hold on to what God teaches us and instructs us dearly as your life depends on it. Don't let it go. In your darkest times, you're going to be in his high tower. Just let that word swimming around. Let him help you and like I said I'm still learning to put my trust in him because we're so used to trying to do things ourselves we're so used to to striving alone because it's so easy we've done it for so long it's almost like we've been here too long but we haven't been here long enough but we're learning we're learning okay um sake of time Jeremiah 50 verse 6 talks about the, the people have forgotten their resting place and I looked up the word resting place it's actually one word 7258 it says a couch lie down well this sounds like a rest now well it's uh, seven seven two fifty seven to recline repose six. But here's what is here's what the anointing is going to do, cause to make to lie down. It's going to cause you to stop trying. It's going to cause you to change focus. Cause you to reconsider. Cause you to see it differently. As many times as it takes for you to to convince you as many times and it says make to rest and this is not physical and it's talking about the mind okay so basically what it's saying here is I'm going to cause you to get into a position to receive knowledge it's basically what he's saying I'm going to get you in such a position to where that's what you want it's what you desire can't get enough knowledge heart knowledge I love heart knowledge it'll take you so much further in this life um, Psalms 24 3 says who shall ascend the hill of the Lord well and who's gonna stand in this holy place well the ones that are seeking it reaching for it grasping it but they're not doing it by themselves there is something greater within them causing them to reach for it 
Okay? Um, and we know that the word hill means a promotion of the mind. The resting place, the process of salvation, regaining our true minds, our true identities. <coughs> Not the flesh, but by the spirit. Okay? Now, in order to accomplish what he has set in motion requires something greater than ourselves, and it's the anointing. And I love the book of Job. So let's go to Job um, 29. Job 29 and... Verse 4. Even though it says this is a parable, it's still instruction. Okay? He can just be telling the story here, but I, I still look at it as it's instructions from God. It says, As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me. Okay, I'm not going to keep talking there. Remember that word, days, and you get to the last part, it says, plus younger. What, what he's saying here is, I was in the days of my youth, when I was a young Christian, when I first came to the Lord, that's what he's saying here, that... I was loving every minute of receiving God's word and knowledge and finding out things, secrets that I had, maybe they had been kept from me. But now he's explaining things in my youth, in my young, my beginning stages with him. And y'all, y'all remember my beginning stages in Haskell. <laughs> Look out, here comes John Hockmiller. <laughs> he's knocking everything over. Man, he had to shake me out of my mindset repeatedly. Not because it was a bad mindset. I had so many hurts and pains and sorrows, he had to deal with them. And the only way he could do it was shake me, shake me, shake me to get me into a position to receive knowledge where you finally sit down and receive. Well, he had to shake that wild streak out of you. I never had a wild streak. But I did have the mind of man because that's what... What you get when you come here, you got to somehow start climbing somehow. He's got to, everybody's going to be different. Um, and I woke up the other day to this scripture, and that's what God was saying to me. It's like, as I was in the days of my youth, as I was when I was a young Christian. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense now because I did, couldn't really, because when we're young and the Lord we're listening to everything. We're trying to receive everything. We're trying to understand everything, and we still can't get it. But we're excited. It's an exciting time. Everything's new. Everything's fresh. A uh, minister came through. Um, I think it was Brother Daniels from Arizona. And he said, you're, 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 you're in a room with a lot of flashing lights right now. Well, great. How do I get out? Because <laughs> it's crazy in here. Well, that process wasn't done. It wasn't done until it was done. You can't rush God. You can't rush training. This isn't boot camp. You can't rush it and expect a good result. You cannot. The anointing has no time limit. And if we don't allow his spiritual influence little by little to deal with us, and you say, well, how come it can't be a lot by a lot? He doesn't work that way, and you can't handle it. I guarantee you, you cannot handle it. Uh, when you were in school, and let's say you had to take X amount of classes per day, how much could you really retain for the next day? Because I guarantee you, by the third day, you wouldn't remember what happened two days ago because you're already on a new set of stuff. But in God, he's like, chew on this for a while. Meditate on it. Live it. I don't care if it's a day, a week, a month, a year. Become a master at it. 
And then when I know you're ready, I'm going to give you something else, and you're going to master that little by little. I love becoming a master. Why? Because your mind is becoming whole again. You're not worried about stuff anymore. You're not confused about things anymore. You're not frustrated. You're not, you're, you're sitting going, I don't know how to help them. Yeah, you do. It may not be a physical need. Maybe I can't get to them and send that anointing to them, that presence. Abilities beyond the six days. Abilities that only God and his secret can perform. And he's like, this is, this is who you really are. Don't worry about what happened in those six days. That was just an experience for you. But in order to get the fullness of this, you're going to have to go full score. You're going to have to go all the way. You're going to have to do all the grade levels. You're going to have to go to community college and regular college. And guess what? I'm paying for the tuition as long as you want to do it. It's free. Okay. I think I can get this done here. Uh... Ezekiel 1660 says, talks about days of thy youth. So there's an important thing for young Christians here. And maybe you're sitting there going, I'm not a young Christian. Okay. Maybe you just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've been a Christian for years, and you just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now what? Days of thy youth. Okay? Don't look at all the time that's already been spent. Think of this now as a new starting point. Fresh anointing, fresh teaching, fresh understanding of what's going on. Maybe all of a sudden now things make a little more sense to you. Because my father explained it this way. I was in a dark room and he turned on the light switch. And he was there. And I couldn't believe it. And that's how, how it was with me. I wasn't in a in a little dark room but when 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 he opened my spiritual eye and I knew he was with me I was like oh my god it's all true the rumors were true <laughs> the secret was true and I didn't have to strive for anything to understand that it just whoa okay this process causes our minds to rest in him and trust him and I wrote this down, what is the anointing? Because it's hard to explain, okay? I went to 1 John 2.27, where it has the word anointing, and it's 55.45 from 55.48 in the Greek. It says, through the idea of contact, okay? Well, what happened in the upper room with the 120? What kind of contact was made? Well, first they heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind, I hear the rustle of the wind. Now, that was a literal sound for them to get their attention, saying something's getting ready to happen, just like that. Something's getting ready to happen. It's been calm this whole point. There hasn't been a cloud in the sky. It's been calm. I, I don't, nothing's happening. Sound of rushing mighty wind. They didn't see the wind, but they heard it. Got your attention now. And then all of a sudden, it came from within, cloven tongues of fire, the ability, the anointing that sparked just like me that night. It came, it came out of me like a, I, 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 it felt like a volcano to me. It felt like a volcano was erupting until it was done. <laughs> Literally, I screamed till I couldn't scream no more. It, it came out. I, I can't explain it any other way, and that was just me. After that, I was just a sobbing, wet mess of balls and tears, you know, and I can't remember. I remember sitting down in a chair, and I remember a minister, I don't know if you remember him, Gary Gatton, and he was there. And that's the night it happened to me. Was it him laying hands on me? I don't know. Was it Gary laying hands on me? I don't know. All I remember is I was crying, 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 crying. And then it happened. 
and um, Gary Gatlin came a second time after that, like, I don't know if it was a year later or months later, and God was dealing with me, and I call it a violent manner. It just, his spirit moved within me so violently to try, I was still, he was still trying to get me into a position of learning. Not that I wasn't receiving, it's just all this was new. In the days of my youth as a young Christian, it was all new to me. I had been in church my whole life, but you couldn't prepare me for this. You couldn't prepare it because it's an experience that's beautiful. Well, you said you were a sobbing wet mess. Yeah, good. The old me's at the bottom of the thing now. That's not me no more. I'm on top of the mountain waving the flag. Ah, I climbed this thing. But God's like, great, there's more. <laughs> I got another mountain over there and another mountain and another mountain. My God, the experience of changing somebody's life for the better to give them a purpose that wasn't there before. Because I was on a spiral going downward needed more alcohol hated the world hated people hated this hated that and you're like not Don Lockmiller hey if you let the world in it'll take you down with it it was a sinking ship not not the world itself what God created is good I'm talking about the people if they're not serving God they will take you down big time to help join their pity party well, I can't feel good so you can't feel good okay I beg to differ now. You know, most most people avoid me now. I don't know. Maybe they they walk in the break room and see me, and they're like, "Oh man, I'm gonna go sit over here. It's that guy." You know? Nah, it's not like that. I don't do anything crazy. Uh, so the annoying was through the idea of contact. Well, how did the old priesthood used to do it? They would smear oil or uh, they use this word, well, I didn't write it down. They had some weird words for the word smear. Just say smear. <laughs> Smeared oil. Ru rubbed oil on, you know. That says the special, the special endowment chrism, C-H-R-I-S-M, chrism, which means unction. Uh, and then this word goes to, to furnish what is needed. Well, that's only going to happen if this influence happening is going to furnish what you need and what you need is word it's going to keep furnishing it until you understand it enough to start living it because you can get a word and, and not know how to live it you can receive a word and not know how to apply it to your daily life well that was a good word but I have no idea how to use it okay the special endowment of the Holy Spirit that unction that only comes from the anointing. A uh, little bit more on chrism here. It says a consecrated oil, an unction, a supernatural thing that if you allow will influence your mind for the change of good. And in closing here, Zechariah 4.6 says, not by might nor by power but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not by man, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit, saith the Lord. You can't do it yourself. I don't care how great you think your education is. This book is spiritually discerned in the secret language of Logos, because that's that's how he did it. That's what it says. The worlds were framed by the word, the Logos. When you look up that word, it says it's, it was framed by Logos. He spoke rhema, but it was made by Logos. So therefore, he says, there is only one way to receive this, and it has to be through my anointing. Your, your, your top education can't receive this book because it's spiritually discerned. But men wrote it under the influence of the anointing. 
and I don't know how else to explain it. It's not natural. It's not natural. It's 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 got by God's spirit. So there there could be much more to this. I know there is, and I thought being in the upper room this whole time. How does it work with the anointing? The anointing is what makes it work. It's not by your efforts in trying to do something. He's like, I have an influence that I'm going to put in you and just receive it. And the rest that I'm resting is a process of regaining your mind that you, you got to allow me to do that little by little. And it gives him no greater pleasure than for his people to receive his truth, for them to understand it. It gives him great pleasure because he's like, Welcome back to the family. You've been gone for so long. Welcome back. You know, here's a ring. I'm going to put it on your finger. Here's a robe. You know, we'll, we'll get you in the shower later. We're going to we're going to clothe you with righteousness right now. I'll wash you by the water of the word later. We're going to do this right now so you feel at home. Amen. And that's my message on the anointing. Um, that could be taken many different directions. And maybe, you, like I said, some of the things I said, you're like, how does that all fit together? Because you were talking about fasting and this and that. John Locke Miller's opinion is it's all talking about the same thing. He has to put us into a certain position to receive knowledge and cause you to rest. He doesn't need to rest. He's a spirit, and you are too. But since we're in human bodies, we do have to physically rest. But he has time and place for all that, you know. We just need to follow the leading of his spirit under the unction or of that anointing and just let it happen. Just let it happen and enjoy. Enjoy it because you'll be young in youth for a while, but what happens to youth? They always grow up. And then it's time to pass the baton to somebody else. Amen? Well... That's my message today on the anointing.